Janmaishwaraya Shruti Sribir Edamana Madapuman. Kunti Devi, she tells in this way, if we want to feelingly cry out the holy name of the Lord, we cannot be attached, nor can we be pursuing these material opulences. High birth, wealth, knowledge, beauty, because they intoxicate us with pride. Even if you are a, a person who is spiritually very recognized and honored, Romaharshan Sutta was such a person. He was honored by great sages and rishis. He was different than Indra in the sense that Indra was a chatriya, demigod, who was living in royalty and puffed up by his power, fame, beauty, and strength and wealth. Romaharshan Sutta was a Brahman, a disciple of Vyastev, who thoroughly knew the Shastras and who lived a very, very simple life. Brahmins in those days did not have material possessions. But he did the same thing. When Shibaladev came to Naimasharanya, Romaharshan Sutta just went on speaking. That's all. Is that such an offense? He just went on speaking. He didn't think it was necessary for himself to offer respect to a superior personality. So Balaramji, out of mercy to Romaharshan Sutta and to show the whole world the importance of Vaishnava etiquette, he condemned Romaharshan Sutta. What is the use of all your knowledge of the Vedas? What is the use of your being a disciple of Yaste? What is the use of your being such a great orator and such a powerful, famous Brahman? If it makes you proud. And with a piece of grass, he ended Romaharshan's life. Vaishnava etiquette is not a detail. It is crucial. We read it again and again in the Holy Scriptures. And in the case of Indra, he ignored offering proper respect for two reasons. One is because of his pride. Two, because he had this sense of familiarity. Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas explain that Brigo, um, Brihaspati would regularly come to visit Indra and the Devatas, almost on a daily basis. It is said familiarity breeds contempt. We take things for granted if they are too much available to us. And that is what Indra did. Here is a very, very important puja going on to him. And Brihaspati, he comes all the time. So he just carried on in what he considered his service. It was his service to be honored by the demigods. He just was performing his service. But then he realized it's too late. Rehaspati did not curse Indra. He just knew that Krishna was about to teach him a good lesson, so he left. Now, Brihaspati was not angry at Indra because he offended him. Brihaspati was displeased with Indra because he knew he was creating his own ruination due to his ahankar, his ego.